What's going on guys, I'm back with another video. In this video, I'll be covering two questions on the SAT math section that you guys need to know how to do and really how to approach these types of problems. This one's a fairly simple trick. This one's more about SAT thinking. And the reason I say SAT thinking is because I strongly believe that in order to get it perfect on the SAT math section, you need to develop this algorithmic SAT thinking. Like you, need to, you need to have an SAT brain basically. And the way you develop that is really by like deciphering a problem the correct way. There's like a correct way to decipher a problem. I'm going to try to show you that over here. But first, let's talk about this trick. This trick, you know, you guys can use all the time, nice and easy. If x is greater than 3, which of the following is equivalent? Like, what this problem wants you to do is make a common denominator, right? So you multiply by uh, x, x plus 3 over here and x plus 2 over here. Then you flip the fraction. Or, or what you could do is just pick a value for x. So always start off with zero. So I put in zero and you get one over one over two plus one third, which is equal to one over three sixth plus two sixth, which is equal to five, one over five or six, which is equal to six over five. Cause you know, you multiply by the reciprocal. That's the basic stuff you guys need to know. So when X equals zero, we, you can say Y equals six over five. So now you need to find, if I plug in X equals zero to any of these, which one gives me six over five? right which ones so this is basically an elimination method and most of the time this eliminates all three so let's plug in zero to the first one you get five over six right bang bang gone gone five over six that's not six over five gone plug in zero you get six over five so this works so this passes on to the next round you plug in zero you get five you plug in zero you get six so only one problem passed on to the next round so obviously that is the correct answer 13 is b so you guys, very simple. Now this one right here. If ax plus two times bx plus seven equals 15x squared plus cx plus 14 for all values of x and a plus b equals eight, what are the two possible values for c? See a problem like this is what you see on the SAT a lot. Like it's just worded weird and it's not like a direct question. Like, this is a direct question, right? Just say, hey, which is equivalent. This is, this is just like, you know, weird, uh, worded weirdly and you're just like, all right, like what's it trying to ask me, to, right? You're trying to find the values of C, okay? So what this basically is saying that there's two possible values of C. So you know right now that there can be two possible values of C. And you know that AX plus two, see, I like to rewrite the uh, the main part, equals 15X squared plus CX plus 14. So what is this telling me to do? I'm trying to uh, not factor this out, right? I'm trying to like distribute, yeah, I'm trying to distribute it out so you get this, okay? Now, how can I match the left side to the right side? All right, so I know if I use FOIL, right? First, outer, inner, last. The first terms multiplied together, which will give me x squared, which will, which will give me a, b, x squared, need to equal 15 x squared, right? So what can a and b be? Hmm, let's see. Well, what times what gives you 15? Uh, three times five gives you 15. So let's make a equal three and b equal five. Oh yeah, and a plus b equals eight. So you have to pick two numbers, that uh, when added together, give you eight, and when multiplied together, give you 15. So five and three works fine. All right, so now you know, we have three X plus two times five X plus seven. And now we need to find the middle term. And the middle term, all you have to do is multiply the outer and the inner. So let's multiply the outer. So you get uh, 21 X plus the inner is 10 X, which is 31 X. Okay, so one possible value of C is 31. Bang, only one of them have 31. So I'm picking D and moving on. I don't even have to check for the second C value. All you have to do is check for one, and you can see none of these have any overlapping uh, values. So once you find one of them, you can move on to the next problem. Of course, if you wanna double check it, then you can always just flip it. So now um, uh, A equals five and B equals three. In that case, you would do five X plus two times three X uh, plus seven. And uh, the middle term, and the first term again, 15x squared, because that's like the criteria, right? The middle term was five times seven, you get 35x plus the inner term, which is six x, which gives you 41x. So 41 equals C. So 31 and 41 are your two possible values. So see how I decipher this problem down? Like, yeah, it's worded weird, right? It's kind of confusing the way they word it. But if you break it down, you know that our right, A plus B equals eight, the left side equals the right side. So, you know, it's the same equation. So how can I get this 15x squared? How can I get this 15x squared to appear on the left side? 
Just make A equal 3 and B equals 5, B equal 5, or make B equal 3, A equal 5. And boom, you got it. Like, that's the type of thinking you guys need to have. Like, work with the problem. Always go to your fundamentals. Every SAT math problem, if you studied and done, like, every topic on Khan Academy, can be done pretty easily. Like, I know some sound confusing, but as long as you use your uh, fundamentals, you'll be straight. So thank you guys for watching. Peace out, dude. Peace out, dude. Peace.